Hello and welcome to another episode. My name is Ross. I'm Craig. It's time to put the kettle on. It's tea time. <laughs> welcome. Um, and in the news today, well, let's go with some f- small fun little facts, starting with British Gas, because they mm-hmm. have ordered a thousand electric vans. Yeah, they're Vauxhall vans, which is interesting because they don't have an electric van. Um, however, they do have one coming up, which so it looks like the Vivaro E, which is due to come out in 2021. So supposedly, mm-hmm. British Gas have bought those. Is that just a well-timed publicity stunt, or is it a meaningful change? Who knows? But uh, there you go. So mm. next time you see, when well, I say next time, assuming you've already just had a service, and it's going to be a year till you get the next one, next time you see a British gas guy, he might be driving a Vauxhall electric van, which no one has any idea what it's going to be like. There we go. Um, now, um, as I mentioned to you, Craig, before, um, I am uh, a fan of a show that is in America, which is a Tesla focus show called Now You Know. Um, and I was watching their 200th episode the other day. Congratulations to them for that. Um, and interestingly, they, they covered some of the things that we talked about last week, uh, including the rentable scooters. Wow. Um, and I, I, it was a, I, I think um, Jesse himself rides scooters. So they were quite um critical of the uk <laughs> and how stupid it was that we i mean we talked about it as well but how stupid it was that um the the rented ones are allowed but the private ones are not um but they made one valid point which i thought was worth repeating um which was that really if you're the if you're a police officer or whatever and you and you see someone go past on a scooter are you going to know wh- which whether it's a rented one or a private one? Because that's going to be difficult. He said, uh, so I think uh, Zach uh, from the show said, if, if he had one, he'd probably just paint it green and write the words L. I think, I think Lime is the company that does it. So, you know, L-Y-M-E and write that on the scooter and, and then you just get away with it. Uh, so whilst we're not condoning it. Yeah, uh, we, didn't we say the same thing about the green number plates that green vehicles would have? You know, there's nothing stopping you painting your number plate green. No, but that's definitely worse. <laughs> because that would yeah. be allowing people with petrol cars to pollute the planet whilst pretending they're green. What we're saying is that people who have private electric scooters are more likely to look after electric scooters than those who've bought a rented one because it's the rented ones that cause the problems because they're the ones that people just discard on the floor, which was their point. And I know that that's why they particularly think that the UK is stupid um, because it's not the private ones. That's the issue. It's the rented ones. Anyway. So um, mm. that's a good point. If you do own a scooter, maybe consider re- repainting it and then not tell anybody. Um, they also on that same show, they also talked about um, octopus energy, which, Uh, I was going to do some more information on because obviously the UK residents that watch us might be more interested in that. But clearly uh, having 200,000 subscribers as they now have has caused an impact because the the Octopus Energy's website was down today. So (laughs) I wasn't able to get any more information. Um, But they do have some, uh, when the site's working, they do have some interesting um, uh, software to help them reduce your energy bills to the point where last month or no month before in may people were actually getting paid to use electricity in the uk because we had demand was too high and we had too much sorry not too much, demand was supply was too high and we had too much so they um were literally telling people to charge their cars and turn their washing machines on and stuff too and they would pay them two pence a kilowatt that's quite uh, revolutionary uh, it was. I think it's a weird situation because of COVID, but um, uh, but yes. Um, but um, 
I was just going to say, the, the, the two energy companies we've mentioned so far, um, up until April, I was an Octopus Energy customer. Were you? And I switched to British Gas. No. What, because they don't get electric vans? Nope, because it's cheaper. <laughs> so they're actually paying me. That, that wasn't a thing back in April. So that must be a brand new thing. Um, um, Octopus is 100% it, renewable too. Uh, it, that's what they... It, it, sorry, it would have been just for the... I think it's just for those that have the electric car tariff. Right, specific tariff, okay. Yeah, so I, I didn't have that, obviously, because I have an electric car. Um, but yeah, no, Bridge Gas, as in the big one of the big three, um, mm. they are the cheapest energy prices they've ever been right now. Yes. It's, it's a real good time to switch. And I mean, the way the UK market is right now, because of the whole energy sector, you can switch every year and there's no loyalty requirements. So I think that's what a lot of people do in the UK. Yeah, but remember, the idea is to try and put your money where you believe in. Now, I appreciate it's cheaper, but is it enough cheaper? Are they still using non-renewables? Because if they are using non-renewables and octopus are using only renewables, then I say, shame on you, boy. Shame on you. Yeah, but I'm, yeah, okay. okay. I'll, I'll, accept, I'll accept that, Burn. But um, <laughs> I'll, I'll ask me, I don't know. I'm quite naive. Uh, I, I'm going to withdraw the burn a little bit because I, I think that's a bit unfair. But um, uh, but obviously, I do think we should uh, consider where the energy is, how the energy is being produced, um, because if it is a, a, a very small comparison, then I would pick the cleaner energy. Um, uh, they also reported final thing from there. I'd like to just keep stealing things from their show, but they, they mentioned something which reminded me of something that we did. So um, uh, apparently the, so because it's the Tesla channel, they were reporting on the Tesla Gigafactory in Berlin. Mm. So they obviously have one in China that they built. Now they have one in Berlin, which is they're building really fast. However, they seem to have uh, taken a step back from it or scaled it back a little bit. Um, and one of the things that they mentioned may have been removed from the factory was them creating their own batteries. And I Ooh. wondered whether now what they speculated that maybe they were considering making the battery somewhere else. Now, obviously, we've already been to the supposed new location in Bridgewater, and we did have our own theory that maybe that's where the batteries were going to get made mm. who knows but that's um, interesting. but yes it seems there's another piece of that puzzle so i just thought i'd just quickly mention that um right what else we got we've got so the other main news really came out of our chancellor mr i make sure i say his name correctly Rishi Sunak, um, yeah. is, he delivered his proposal for how he's going to get the country back up and running uh, with this um, all directions point to a greener world thing. So uh, these got some new things that came out today. Uh, the first one being vouchers for homeowners and landlords, which would give... Um, grants which would pay for two thirds or up to up to 5k um for energy efficiency projects done to the home and if you're in a low paying or low income household you can get the full amount up to ten thousand um so that's mm. that's one thing that's interesting um perhaps we don't know exactly what's going to be in that, what projects are allowed and which ones aren't. But from what um, the speculation is from other people, they think that it's going to be to do with energy efficiency in terms of um, insulation and all that sort of stuff, as opposed to energy generation. Yeah, I, I read the same thing. So um, loft insulation, cavity insulation, triple glazing windows, uh, eco boilers, that type of stuff. It was reported in somewhere that there was something about Dominic Cummings thinking that, that, that insulation was boring or something, and 
that they should probably not go with that, but that's a something. I don't know. I, I got a bit about Dominic in a bit. What's well, sorry? I got a bit about Dominic in a bit. Got yeah, Dom yeah, come in. So I don't. I can't remember what that source was. So that's one to just look up if you feel like it. Um, uh, but there was. Um, There was I read something uh, from the CCC, which is the, uh, the Committee on Climate Change, um, where they base it basically says that the half of the energy consumption of the UK is to do with heating our homes, and that's why it's such a big push, and that's just, just actually is big big problem of ours. So okay, that was interesting. But I've, I've got a bit more on them. I'll come back to them later on. So. Um, hmm. Going back to the other things that um, Rishi announced, uh, stamp duty removed up to five hundred thousand pounds for houses. That has no sustainability reference whatsoever. So let's move on. Just, uh, just a clause. There's a clause. Oh. Only England and Northern Ireland. Is that Not right? Wales and Scotland. Yeah. We lose out. <laughs> well, so does my opportunity to go and buy a cheaper house in Wales. So that's annoying. Righto. Okay, that's annoying. Um, the VAT on food and accommodation is going to be down to 5% until uh, January the 12th. Again, no real sustainability yeah. there. Let's move on. Well, it's hospitality in general, so the entire thing. We're talking yeah. pubs, theme parks, cinemas, you know, everything. Yeah. Although the most fun for me is the bit where we get given a voucher, 50% off Monday to Wednesday, if we go to a restaurant. Brilliant. A very little Brownie. Up to ten, up to ten pounds per head. Ten pounds per head, including children. So it does it does? Yeah, and not yeah. not alcohol. So my five year old son is going to have a banquet. Let me tell you. <laughs> and yeah, honestly, he's going to eat the lot. I know he's small, <laughs> but I'm sure he will. <laughs> <laughs> but he could make it sustainable. He could go to a nice plant first place, and I mean, ten quid point I can go farther. That's a good point, actually. Um, right, yeah, that's a good point. So the government are going to give us all... There, excellent point, Greg. So the government's going to give us £10 a head, so use it wisely. Go to some sort of, I don't know, farm shop with a cafe or something. That's some, some sort of place that actually does try to do things sustainable and give them the money, not... I don't want to choose a company to diss on. So... You choose your own restaurant that you think would be the most, uh, or does the most for sustainability and go there and use your £10 there. Yeah, and it's only in August, only Monday, Tuesday and Wednesdays. And yeah. And you have to eat in. You can't eat out. So like, like a farmer's shop, for example, if they put a table and chairs inside that shop, you can sit down and technically you, you'll be within the rule to do we that. Should find, we, should, we should find, it's going to take us a long time, so maybe we shouldn't, but um, we should find all the, <laughs> all the farm shops that have indoor places and then list them on our non-existent website for people to find out. Um, just give them tables and chairs, just, you know, help you. Just one table, one chair. Doesn't say you can't stand around it. It's not. Um, right, so... Uh, in the, so oh, but I went back to the the climate the what did I say it was called the committee well, the climate. CCC the CCC yeah so they have a response to Rishi's uh, announcement today so I thought I'd read it out to you it said making homes energy efficient and climate resilient is one of the UK's biggest opportunities the Chancellor is to be congratulated for making it the focus of his support for green jobs in what is very encouraging immediate response to COVID nineteen. We must now understand quickly how the government intends to deploy the substantial funds announced today. It marks a turning point in the government's support for energy efficiency, and it is complemented by welcome announcements to decarbonize the public estate and create new jobs in the natural environment. The challenge before government is now to build on this stimulus and ensure that these green jobs endure beyond 2021. We look forward to seeing the Chancellor's infrastructure strategy and spending plans in the autumn. So they seem happy. Yeah, no, that seems quite good. Yeah. Um, I mean, the, the other point that it is going to make 100,000 green employees to actually go about doing this work. I mean, every, every household in the UK is going to get this at least £5,000 grant. So 
that's, that's a major infrastructure change and yeah the jobs going to get created from this it's going to be massive i do think it is a shame that solar panels aren't included though uh, they haven't rolled it up though have they entirely no that's fair they haven't um but yeah i, I would sorry i rephrase i i would be disappointed if solar panels weren't be weren't included because it, the tech power wall? what sorry how much does a Tesla power wall? How much do them things go for? Can uh, 5K buy one of them? Probably, I can't remember, but I think it's about 7,000. Correct That's me. not bad then, if that counts too. Maybe, maybe, that, maybe that's what they'll do. It's like, come on, Elon Musk, come to the UK. We're going to buy every household <laughs> right, a exactly. power wall. I mean, imagine, <laughs> it would be amazing. Yeah, just everyone gets, yeah. just guess one in the post. Just plug this in, job done. Obviously, not much point having a uh, power wall if you don't have any web generating electricity. <laughs> or, all you'd be doing then is um, buying the electricity when it's cheap and selling it back when it's not, which is uh, not making it more efficient, but is certainly saving you money. Which, actually, as it happens, reminds me of another news item um, that Tesla. So they had a, a massive mega pack thing in Australia, which they deployed a while back now, um, which supposedly saved thousands and thousands of pounds and uh, really helped solve their energy crisis at the time. And it's all, it's been, it's, I think it's been the only one for, for quite a while. Um, well, now they are making another one. And guess where it is? It's here in the UK. Uh, in, ah. fact, in Dorset, so not again, not too far from me. Um, so in combination or in partnership with Harmony Energy, based in Poole, uh, Tesla is deploying a new Megapack project using their auto bidder AI software. So that's cool. So in the south of England, you guys are on fire. <laughs> yeah, totes. Like, you should be get, you get all the cool stuff. We, you know, Tesla and Tesla and us are like best buds now. Although I said, I said, I said <laughs> uh, one's in Somerset and one's in Dorset, so it's not exactly for anyone who isn't watching this from the UK. That's they're close, but they're not the same place. Ah, they're, they're basically the same place. Ah, like... fine. Yeah, yeah. I was sure that wouldn't offend anyone. Right. Um. So that's all of those items i believe um so um i just thought i would also so going back to the ccc they published mm -hmm. this article about a year ago i think now but um they gave their recommendation <coughs> um for what they thought needed to happen now given today's topic is what or do you want uh to post like? brexit to britain but yes would you like me to list out for you some of the things that they believe is the things that need to happen in terms of our land usage, or should we do it later? Um, keep that in mind when we go through the discussions, and I think that'd be valuable insight. All right, we'll do it later then. Fair enough. In that case, um, oh no, one other thing. Uh, we talked about the um, hydrogen plant in Hull in a previous episode. Um, mm. so I, because we talked about, we didn't, we didn't want to diss on it too much because we didn't know whether it was a good thing or a bad thing. So I, I did a bit of extra sort of looking into that as well, just to sort of like get on standing. So there's a guy who makes, um, really good, um, kind of scientific informative videos. Um, his YouTube channel is called just have a think. And he did a piece on hydrogen recently, uh, not sure how recent it was actually it might have been a while ago but anyway i was like i watched that again um to try and get a fair review or a different perspective on whether hydrogen was actually potentially worth investing because there seems to be an awful lot of mention of hydrogen we mentioned it quite a lot last week um and in lots of the things that they're talking about with the with the money that they're investing a lot of things are talking about hydrogen still and i was getting more and more like stressed out that we're starting all this money into hydrogen and is this thing even worth doing so i watched <clears> it <throat> get a better understanding um now the negatives and the bits that I've, i think i'd already had heard 
are that if you compare, if you're looking at as a fuel cell for a car versus a battery, to, to generate the hydrogen from something like electrolysis has to go through these various stages in order for it to be used to eventually get into the fuel cell, including the energy loss from the electrolysis itself, transporting it, although potentially you could minimize that by using electric vehicles, um, and then the actual usage of the fuel cell within the car. With all the losses that happen along the way, he claimed that a hydrogen fuel cell has about a 35% efficiency from the original energy put in to the energy got out. 35%, right? So that's a lot of energy mm. used and wasted to get to the same level compared to a battery vehicle, which has got an efficiency level of 75%. To put some sort of like a guideline on this, yeah. What would be a petrol level? What's the efficiency of petrol? Well, that's a good question because actually petrol is even worse than hydrogen. So relative, relatively speaking, it's still better than petrol, which is... Yeah, it's kind of like a half, half step up. Yeah, I don't know the number for percentage-wise, for, but I think it's about the 30-ish percent. So similar, okay. it's, it's slightly, hydrogen is slightly better. Um, so as a as a as a fuel cell for a vehicle i still don't think it's on that basis it doesn't make any sense because uh, charging a battery is i think it's, the efficiency of a battery is like 99 percent. so you lose some of that um getting it into the car and then delivering it into the into the power into the wheels and stuff but generally speaking it's a pretty efficient method of using electricity where it falls down where maybe hydrogen should be given a bit of a break is that storing um energy is not particularly great in batteries because obviously they lose charge whereas hydrogen is just it's physical space you just need to add another container and another container and another container if you've got enough space then you can you can store the energy that you've produced in in the gas form kind of as long as you want so I think it does have potential benefit, but on the larger scale uses. So I think we should bear that in mind before I diss them next time or in every other time that they come up. Yeah, uh, I suppose uh, I'm going to quickly talk about hydrogen fuel cells with later on too, because it brings in a point um, actually, what um, Rishi Sunak said right. to do with the hydrogen fuel cell. So, talk about that in a sec. But um, yeah, to finish up what, what Rishi did to now say as well was also um, a two billion help for the unemployment sector, uh, or any any youth unemployment that exists, to basically get them into apprenticeships um, and start working the way up the ladder to become craftsmen or women in the area that can help in green investments. Yeah. So the, the idea is taking, you know, maybe 16 year olds who I mean, don't really know what they want to do in their life and help them to become carpenters, to go into houses to actually install, um, you know, cavity installation. Yeah. So I think that's co quite a cool initiative. Um, it's a bit more yeah, than cavities. I mean, it's effective though. I, I mean, the, the problem that I have with all this and yeah, today's topic is all about post-Brexit Britain, um, only because I think now with Rishi's statement, the, the summer statement, it's, it's interesting time to talk about this because there's been a lot of stuff announced over the last six or so months um, and really kind of condensed it together. Obviously, the pandemic was an unforeseeable sort of like, I don't know, edge case. That's kind of knocked things about a little bit. Oh, I've been um, complaining about this for years. Oh, I could have told you that was going to happen. <laughs> I think, I think the, the, the bit that bothers me the most is that uh, how this is all working is um, all of Rishi's announcements amount to 30 billion um, of a budget investment. Yeah. Over the next six months. Um, I, can't, I don't, know, don't know the exact number of what's been invested so far because of the pandemic, but that also amounts to a couple of hundred billion, I believe. 
Do you know? Is it no? I was going to say, is is it thirty? Or I thought it was three. Um, no, thirty. Okay. Uh, there's, there's two billion in youth unemployment. There's two billion in the green the green scheme to get houses. Mm. There's a billion spent on just greening up public buildings. I like, I like that phrase, greening up. Greening up, what, as in growing plant uh, window sills? No, I think it just means um, putting, uh, yeah, triple glazing in our schools. Insulation. Basically. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, there's, there's a lot of money being spent. I mean, even the, the 5% uh, VAT on hospitality is going to cost in the region of 14 billion, apparently. Wow. I mean, it's ri ridiculous money. Uh, get but the farm shop, everyone, get to that farm shop. It's free money, guys. I mean, I mean, they need it. There's like, for example, I'm going to name drop Audion as as a cinema chain. I can't really see how they can survive this. Cinemas are going to get hit hard by this. I mean, they, they've been suffering anyway with stuff like Netflix. Um, or just, TVs. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they must, they must be struggling. But uh, yeah, good, good luck, Audion. Hope to see you on the other side. <laughs> um, yeah, but the borrowing, the borrowing is becoming a problem because this is all borrowed money. The UK doesn't have this money. Uh, we are borrowing it all, and we have been borrowing substantially during the entire pandemic. So we have to pay this back at some point. Um, historically, that typically gets passed on to the debt, and we now have quite a debt haul, which gets passed on to our kids. And our kids pay off all our debt. I mean, arguably the pandemic was kind of unforeseeable. It's just one of those things. But these type of investments, they are kind of foreseeable. And we have been assured we won't go back into austerity. So I think that's quite a good um, thing to do. Um, mainly because, yeah, what's next for Britain? Well, the next thing is Brexit. That's still there. Um, Done that yet? Come on. Yeah, do you remember the whole Brexit thing? Like, no, I must have been so, asleep. <laughs> so yeah, we, we, we officially left the European Union on the 31st of January this year uh, at 11 p.m. And since then, we've been in a pandemic. <laughs> 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 we haven't really done a lot. Yes, yes. Um, we're, we're in an 11-month uh, transition period where we're meant to negotiate our withdrawal um, we still basically live off the European systems right now, um, but they will disappear on the 31st of December if we don't have a deal. Yeah. So I think the budget plan today and the budget plan that was announced in October last year, um, they're all situated for a post-Brexit Britain. And the pandemic's kind of just got bang smack in the way. But... Uh, well, yeah. that's what happens if you spend three years trying to decide what to do, in it? The pandemic arrives. <laughs> Basically, yeah. I suppose the only saving grace for Brexit is that it wasn't just Britain, it was the entire world. So we're all in the same even kelter a little bit. So, you know, everyone's kind of lost out effectively by this. So Brexit now is, uh, is back on the table. Um, it has been negotiated in the EU right now. Um, we are trying to get a deal, even though there's a lot of saying that perhaps we don't even want one, but that's politics. We're not going to get into politics. Um, but what has been announced, uh, was announced in October and today is the idea of Britain becoming a green finance leader, which I think is a very interesting concept. A green finance leader. Yes. So the UK is very much thinking green. Um, we're in a situation right now where there's hefty investments today announced. Uh, there's hefty investments announced in October. Yeah. I don't, not being political either, but um, I have heard that whilst there are large numbers being invested, some people are criticizing that compared to Germany, it's tiny. I'll come to that in a second. Okay. It is, it is tiny in comparison. Right. Um, so there's a thing called the 
Renewable Energy Country Attractiveness Index. That's a thing. Okay. As of May 2020, oh, they only care about the top 10 countries. Where would you say Britain sits? Top of your head. In terms of the renewable energy attractiveness thingy? Yes. Uh, I would say, I'd say pretty low, to be honest. 17. Well, they were only came for the top 10. We're in the top Sorry. 10. I'll give, We're in the top I'll 10. give you a clue. I didn't say 17. <laughs> I said 7. So I said 7. 7. 7. Yeah. More seven. like it. Uh, we're sick. Well, that's pretty just, close. Then. Just behind yeah. Germany. <laughs> Who, uh, well, well, what's that got to do with anything? Because that's just the truck. Well, I mean, what does this even mean? This attractiveness thing is attractiveness to companies, or does it whether the windmills look pretty? I mean, what what, what are we talking about? <laughs> uh, this is attractiveness to investors, so people who want to come build renewable energy things. Um, like, for example, right now the UK um, has the cheapest offshore wind costs um, on the top ten. Um, yeah, don't know why. I mean, it seems the investment we've made in the North Sea for the wind turbines, they've done quite well. Um, they're now fairly lucrative to invest in, apparently. So okay. we are attracting green investors to the UK. Um, part of that as well is to do with how the UK government has released uh, carbon density data, which is how carbon is basically allocated and released. And its figures, so that the housing market is only responsible for a fifth of the UK's CO2 production. So the CCC figure of, what was it, 25%? No, it's 50% yeah. of all energy. It wasn't necessarily of all CO2, though. Right, okay. Mr. Stats. But, uh, yeah, fifth for CO2, housing. Okay. Um, so the Green Grant Scheme, which was announced today, that's going to tackle that head on, as well as increasing the energy efficiency. Um, that sounds like a really cool thing to do. Uh, it also increases our attractiveness for renewable energy. So we're going to start moving up that scale. Um, yeah, but, but right now, the UK outperforms all other G20 countries on decoupling carbon uh, CO2 emissions from our economic growth. So we, we're not banking on this. Right, okay. That makes sense, yeah? Yeah. Um, and it's, it's a lot to do with the data we're releasing. We are doing a lot of research. Uh, we're releasing lots of data. That's allowed companies like Barclays uh, to offer the first uh, green uh, bond that people can invest in. Oh. And, and this is the financial bit comes in, so we're going to be the financial leader. Yeah. I mean, right now, 6% of our economy is finance. We're the world's biggest exporter of financial services. Yeah. So I suppose, yeah, we care a lot about this stuff. So getting green in that sector um, and releasing stuff like green bonds makes sense because you can now invest in... Uh, the way the bark is doing it is, is the carbon, um, carbon density data of the housing market it controls and how it reinvests that in the future. So that bond should grow based on the fact that the more green your house, the more vibrant it is in the future. Mm. So, seems like a smart investment, um, if you want to be that way. But yeah, I mean, we're, we're sixth on the Renewable Energy Country Attractiveness Index. Who is number one? The US. So, yeah. Cheers, US. I mean, you just had your Independence Day too. You're also number one on the attractiveness scale. <laughs> well, they're, they're doing number ones all over the place at the moment. Yeah, I mean, number two is China. So, I mean, they're the big guys, basically. They're the ones chucking all the money into this. Yeah. For the UK to be sixth behind Germany, which is fifth, I think is pretty good. Uh, uh, we, seem, we seem to be quite up there. have the whole list there. Is Norway on it? Uh, no, no way is on it. Let me get the full list. We can we can insert this somewhere, but uh, all these will be in the show notes. 
Yeah, so the, the actual full scale um, only shows top 40, but the top 10 as of May 2020 are 10, Japan, 9, Netherlands, right. uh, 8, Denmark, yeah. Se 7, India, UK, okay. number 6, Germany, 5, Australia, 4, uh, number 3, Arch rival France. Uh, in the lead are China and the US. And uh, the US has just taken over China in the last year. When this was run last year, China was number one. Right. So they're battling out. Uh, the US has risen from eight to six in the last two years. So we're also doing quite things quite well. We seem to be one of the biggest um, biggest risers. Biggest fall is India. They've gone from three to seven. Mm. I mean, I that that feels about right because um, for ages it felt like everyone else was. You know, I, I, I knew stories about Denmark. I knew stories about Germany. I knew uh, things were going on in the Netherlands. That makes sense. I thought we were lagging behind, but certainly in the last. Even the last three months, there's been a lot, lot more talk about it. So I just hope it, you know, it is real, real stuff. I uh, hope so. I mean, so do you like the idea of being a green finance leader? Is that something that kind of ticks the box in the future, do you think? I mean, I'm not tickled. Force Brexit Britain? I'm not tickled, but, um, but we have to work to our strengths. And we've always been, particularly as you said, we export lots of professional services, one of which being finance. So that makes sense that if you're going to, you know, if, if manufacturing isn't your, isn't your strong point, then you stick with what you're, what you're good at. But I would like to see more manufacturing uh, coming up. Good. The next one's all manufacturing. Hey! Um, have you heard of OneWeb? I have heard of OneWeb. OneWeb are a pathetic attempt Compared to Starlink, that's what I think it is. <laughs> well, that's quite damning, considering the UK government just pledged to invest 400 million in it. I may have knew that before I said it. <laughs> uh, Wasn't one was... basically failing because it was it was it was a nice idea of setting up the essentially the same as Starlink, setting up satellites all around the yeah. planet. Uh, except their idea died a death and they didn't, they sent up a few and then that, that they ran out of money and I basically yeah. bailed them out to try and compete with um, SpaceX. Exactly. Yeah. I would have, um, I would have just given Elon some money and said, is there anything else we can do for you, mate? Cause that would have been easier. <laughs> well, I mean, what, what the UK government's kind of done is quite smart in the sense of it now has control and interest in this company. I saved them from bankruptcy, um, along with India. India's also pledged 400 million. So the UK and India have kind of gone double partners into one web. Uh, I think they bought roughly half of it. Yeah. Um, and the idea, yeah, the idea is to have broadband from space. Uh, exactly the same as Starlink by SpaceX. Um, yeah, but the cool thing is manufacturing, because of the deal the UK has done, all one web satellites will now be built in the UK. Oh, goody. So that's bringing manufacturing of satellites back to the UK. Fantastic. Which is uh, pretty interesting, I think, since I assume we're going to need a lot of them to have any sort of coverage. Um, Where have they been launched from? I, I don't know. I mean, there's, there's a little bit about um, what the UK are doing in space coming up. Well, yeah, because I'm... I'm stay, stay tuned. <laughs> As far as I know, we don't really have a space program, do we? I don't know, maybe. maybe tell, me, tell me otherwise. We don't, no. Um, that's kind of one of the things we're losing with Brexit. We are losing access to the European Space Agency. Um, but we're also losing access to the um, uh, Agnes, Agnes, with basically the European GPS system. We're losing access to that too. Right. So we, we need to build our own. And the investment in OneWeb is to do just roughly that. So we start getting access to our own uh, GPS network, uh, which we can use for that. Yeah, Elon Musk recently published, tweeted, sorry, to everyone, that um, 
the GPS in the cars had just got better. Because of Starlink? I think so, yeah. Yeah, when, when, when they launched some today as well, but that they got cancelled because of weather again. I missed that. Yeah, I think it was just a couple hours ago. Um, uh, yeah, anyway, so one of our made in the UK, going to bring lots of manufacturing jobs. Cool thing for the UK. Um, the way Downing Street has played this and what they've said is uh, the deal will support the UK to pioneer in research, development, manufacturing, and exploitation of novel satellite technologies Excellent. whilst boosting UK manufacturing. Exploitation? That's exactly what they said. That's direct quote from Downing Street. So I know what they mean by exploitation of novel, of novel, novel satellite technologies. But I assume it means we're going to get our hands on a lot of cool stuff and innovation is going to go forward. Yes. Um, talking about space, uh, Graham Turnock, who is the UK Space Agency Chief Executive, so we do have a UK Space Agency, oh. uh, has said... Now has recently been fired. <laughs> it may be redundant. <laughs> yeah, no. no longer required. No, that's fake. Uh, no, yeah, he's, he's said some good stuff. He's, he's basically saying now is the right time to look at new ways to use space to boost the UK's uh, prosperity, security, and global influence. Um, I think the main thing right now is we're becoming a global player in the realms of satellite technology and how it works. I mean, we might not be number one. I think, yeah, as you've mentioned, SpaceX and you know Elon's uh, Starlink satellites are probably going to reign supreme for a little while but i think the investment from the uk so we get to build them in the uk the investment from india is primarily because they want direct access to the uh, broadband they'll provide because they have the most uh, rural displaced settlement of people who don't have access to high speed net yeah uh so yeah smart play by the uk and india who is also there's still many pockets in dorset uh and in and in somerset they haven't got it so Oh, yeah, fingers crossed. Yeah, I think the, the idea of one web is they're trying to target the last billion people, the last billion people who don't have internet access. Right, uh, it's um, a big market, I assume, and this is exactly what Elon wants. So that's exciting times, and maybe we'll all, all go uh, space space broadband from now on because it'll become more efficient. I assume get rid of all the wires and the flow. Um, can't, can't yeah. it works. All I know is the latency should be really low. Also, I don't know why exactly, but it, it should be. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure. I've never used um, satellite based broadband. It kind of feels slow. I don't know why, but I assume it's not bad, I think. Well, yeah, as a, you would have thought, the latency would be worse coming from space, which I think only highlights how little I know about it. So I'll I won't make myself sound any more stupid than I already have. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, yeah, I mean, they're, they're low Earth orbit, so they're not that far away, I suppose. Yeah, I, I don't know if that helps. Doesn't. Know. Lasers. I'll look it up and I'll let you know next week. Uh, people already watch this, already know. If anyone's already watching. Um, yeah, well, I think the idea of putting us on the global stage is interesting. And... However, you give one web a damning introduction as a bankrupt failed idea. I think the UK uh, putting its feet in the water and saying we want some of that. It's pretty ballsy. It's yeah, definitely... I mean, yeah. Assuming it is what we think it is, and it's a, a, an attempt to get into the space program, then I'm I'm in. Yeah, as you said, I have no idea where we launched these from. Uh, I don't know anything about that. You know, will we use SpaceX to launch them? Maybe. I have no idea. Unlikely. But um, yeah, I don't know. But um, yeah, but this is the first of many supposed high-risk, high-reward investments that's been planned by the Blue Skies Project. Now, have you heard of this? No. Tell me more, Craig. It's a very cool name, isn't it? It's kind of like uh, Project Blue Book, which is the alien thing from A51. But um, yeah, this is the Blue Skies Project, otherwise known as the British ARPA. 
um, the Advanced Research Projects Agency, which mm -hmm. the US have is DARPA. Yeah. There's just the Advanced Research Projects Agency with defense in the beginning. Um, so we don't want defense. We just want to stick with DARPA. Um, so this was announced in the March budget, 2020. So just recently. And it's the brainchild of Mr. Dominic Cummins. Oh, wonderful. So going back to him earlier, this is what he wants in the UK. Um, he wants advanced research and innovation to be leading Britain into the future after Brexit. I mean, if that's true, I can. I, I whilst I do actually think the insulation is probably very important, I can kind of see where he's coming from with the whole boring. Because mm. in comparison, it is boring, but you know. I mean, what cavity wall insulation versus like stuff DARPA does. I mean, yeah. is, that, is that even the best thing to do anyway? I mean, I, I don't know. Uh, I don't know, but right now we put 800 million into this Blue Skies project ideas. Um, and I, I would assume we've already spent half of that on one worm. So <laughs> I don't know how much budget's left to spend on other things, but uh, the idea is that, yeah, we're going to start get back to our scientific roots as a country. Um, and I think that's basically what Dominic Cummins is pushing for. Um, and obviously Boris being the prime minister is completely behind uh, Dominic Cummins. And yeah, we seem to be getting the same thing that the US really has and has had since the 1950s. Um, and even though Brexit is not our cold war, um, I think we are pushed, and I think when pushed to the edge, innovation arises. Uh, a, in, it, it, in a crisis, innovation always comes through. Yeah. Stronger, there's, so. there's a quote there somewhere. <laughs> there is definitely a quote there somewhere. It's yeah. It, it, either way, we've basically self inflicted ourselves with a wound in order to get better on the other side. It's kind of like we broke our own leg, so it comes back stronger. Um, uh, I, yeah, obviously, unfortunately, that just breaking our leg um, possibly understates the situation, but um, I know what you mean. I know we can yeah. try to get across, but for the sake of anyone who decides that was a bit, it wasn't meant to be. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, if, if we can get any, anything anywhere near what DARPA has done, I think for Britain, that would be amazing. And yeah, this kind of sent me off in a bit of a, a tangent researching DARPA and this is exactly what they have done. And uh, yeah, they've been responsible for yeah, a lot of cool stuff that we take for granted, like weather satellites, the internet, GPS, um, robotics. They also invented the first autonomous car. So, first autonomous car. Did they? How autonomous is it? No, so they, 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 they started this thing, apparently so at least, and they did all this only on 3% of the Pentagon's budget with 220 members of staff. So they are small and... Yeah, but, uh, but what is 2% of the Pentagon's budget? 3%, but I don't know. So, so quite a few billions, I assume. Oh, I actually yeah. know the full budget. I mean, you know, I, I think I could probably manage that. I've got a few billions paying 220 staff. That's fine. I can do that. No problem. I mean, Elon's in the same same situation as sports. He's got, he's got a few billion. He's got a lot more than 220 staff, though. He's got his own version of DARPA over there, yes. I mean, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, he's now, um, I forgot the name of technologies, but he's now getting into, like, um, vaccines and stuff now. I mean, I don't know. Yeah, and uh, tequila. Uh, yeah, and he's making shorts. Um, but yeah, was it te Tesla Keeler? I believe uh, so. Tesla Keeler, yeah. Uh, uh, apparently, all for, all against um, what's his name? The guy from ER, Ocean's Twelve, Gray. Um, George Clooney. <laughs> so one, yeah. Well, apparently, it's all against George Clooney. <laughs> I, I actually, I'm not actually up to speed on this particular story, which is unlike me. But um, uh, is that what oh. it is? I mean, it's a complete tangent. This is more cultural stuff now. It's nothing right. really to do. Right. But apparently, uh, George Clooney has a successful te tequila business, which he sold for a billion quid uh, recently. And he was also one of the very first test drivers of the Roadster. 
Right. And he gave it a damning review. Oh. So they kind of had a bit of a spat and fell out, uh, Elon and George. Mm -hmm. And yeah, they're, they're pegging his entry into the tequila market as a bit of a middle finger to George. But who knows? Who knows? I, that does sound like better, something like Elon would do. But. Well, he's been doing a lot of it recently with his shorts that he's been making and um, short shorts, more specifically. Um, just having, having a go at the people that um, basically said he couldn't do what he was doing. So he's having a lot of fun at the moment. Is our, is our, it, does seem, it does be. It's I mean, worthy possessions. I mean, the stock price has 7x or something in the last year or so. So yeah. it might have a reason to um, gloat a little bit. I mean, it's definitely working, yeah. Um, yeah, just give, to give a little insight on... Um, so what Rishi said when they announced Project Blue Skies, uh, his quote is, we are a country of Newton, Hodgkin, Turing, and a history filled with ideas, innovation, invention, and discovery. And it's truly a national history. The first steam railway ran between Stockholm and Darlington. The first television was invented by a Scot, and a Welshman invented the first hydrogen cell. And uh, Joaquin and Ben Bernal, born in Northern Ireland, discovered the first radio buses. So we do seem to be a country on the forefront of things. And yeah, I don't actually know off the top of my head, but we seem to have invented a lot of things we use every single day. It's, yeah, historically. Historically. We have, we have done a lot recently. And Brexit could be where that changes. Well, I mean, that would be a positive result. Well, I hope so, yeah. So definitely need to chuckle a bit more, I think. But like um just as a before we gloss over the fact that a Welshman invented the hydrogen fuel cell. Uh, I just want to take the next half an hour to discuss that. <laughs> okay. I mean I was I'm, my first reaction was, Oh, it's his fault. Um but um but I hope he but, I just I just hope he didn't design it for a car, in which case I'm gonna have to Well this well, the information I'm going to provide now is hopefully going to answer exactly why this thing was invented and how it perhaps come to where it is. Okay. It, it was invented 181 years ago. Oh, so they take the time, don't they? <laughs> so this was, yeah, this was a long time ago before a lot of stuff like cars were <laughs> even a thing. So, um, yeah, and this was just kind of invented as a scientific proof. And um, the guy's name, by the way, is uh, Sir William Sir William Grove from Swansea. Billy Grove. Yeah, Billy Grove invented the hydrogen fuel cell in 1839. Well done, him. Yeah, almost 200 years ago, and we're well, still well. using that thing. <laughs> yeah, let's not get on that boat. Yeah, we will have Welsh fans. <laughs> but uh, yeah cool invention happened a long time ago still using it uh, kind of makes sense why we are still using it because it's so old we must have innovated to a point where it's small enough to outperform batteries only because of its size does that sound fair? does it sound fair that it's only now working because you made it small enough? In the sense of batteries look quite big and bulky, hydrogen fuel cells are not because they're so old, they've been here longer. As in, batteries um, will get there, but they're just not there yet. Well, it's the it's the density of the energy is, is the difference, yeah. So, the, um, I can't remember what it is, unfortunately, the numbers, but there's a you can compress hydrogen into a fuel cell at that point the compression allows you to have um per weight like 10 times 20 times maybe even more um energy density than a battery can manage mm. so yes on a bulky scale per kilowatt then yes hydrogen is is better it's just the process that it requires to make it in the first place. 
The other benefit to hydrogen is that once you once once you've got it, once it becomes a gas and you burn it, then the only output of it is is water. But um, mm. but yeah, it's just that process of, of making it in the first place. That's the problem. But if you've got if in a world where we've got so much more um, renewable energy, because if you take, take it over the year, in 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 summer you're going to potentially produce way more than you ever need. If we get to that point, which is entirely plausible, at that point, it's okay for us to waste it by turning mm. it into hydrogen if we can use it later, because we can then convert the wow. hydrogen <laughs> to electricity in the winter time to. I mean, they're talking about making hydrogen-powered boilers for the domestic market. So, if yeah, if you've got that capability, then great. The only my only question would be at that point: is there not another technology that can store battery power, basically, in another way? Because I know they are looking into a lot of different things, and mm. like, even to lifting very heavy rocks in a big hole and then dropping them when you need it. Um, you know, what's the, if that's 38% efficient, then obviously that hydrogen isn't even, isn't even better than that. So yeah. you, can, you can move it around. Um, but I, so I, so yes, and maybe it works for trucks and large vehicles, but I still think that's a, a, a a temporary thing i still think batteries will eventually the, they'll figure out how to make the density better than that and then all that infrastructure that you need for hydrogen will just be pointless so that's the bit that still i'm still struggling with i can yeah, see no, I, use but yeah i agree i agree i agree that's just kind of a middle step to get to the battery future but i mean this still could be a benefit to hydrogen i mean um yeah out of all the water we have only three percent is fresh water then some percent salt water. So the fact that it does create fresh water could be a thing that could be beneficial. Um, well, interestingly, when you do electrolysis, um, uh, it, because you're essentially running electrical current through water, it works better if you've got an electrolyte in the water, such as salt. Hmm. So electrolysis from salt water is presumably a thing. So actually converting seawater into fuel to drive a car and fresh water, that's, that's pretty good benefits. Yeah, so at that point, okay, sure. Stick these things out at, at sea maybe and they just produce clean water for us and hydrogen energy that we can, that, that, okay, fine. I mean, at, at least power ships just to like, Give drinking water to the crew. I mean, that sounds pretty cool. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. So, see what I mean? Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Kind of off the tangent there, but we often hydrogen fuel cells. It's the P. Well, should... Yeah. So, so well, well, should mention. Uh, I didn't know that until today, and yeah, now everyone I meet is going to know that. That's how Wales works. I feel sorry for them already. <laughs> uh, Sir William Grove, just in case you forgot that, by the way. Surely everyone, you, um, you already know them. Yeah. Um, you live in Wales, so... You... Yeah, but my five-mile limit's been increased now, so I can actually... Yeah, mate, it, wasn't even, it wasn't even a joke about your five-mile limit. <laughs> <laughs> I was just trying to see whether I could reduce the uh, number of... Uh, Welsh fans down by fifty percent from two to one, um, but you know, I don't really want to do that. So I apologise. I mean, who's, who's, who's the other fan? <laughs> um, it's your mum and dad, wasn't it? I don't, I don't. Yeah. Um, outside of the eight hundred million that's been invested in Project Blue Skies or Blue Skies Project, whatever it's called, um, basically the British ARPA, um, we're also getting. 900 million as a separate pool uh for the government's national space strategy so the strategy yeah national Not space strategy and space innovation over the next five years okay. so 
almost a billion quid to be spent on space. All right. Okay. I mean, we're still quite small. But that sounds quite good. And even if we spend a billion quid to, you know, to buy a rocket off SpaceX, that sounds pretty cool. Yeah. Well, one of the ones that they've used 10 times that they're not sure about. <laughs> well, yeah, uh, I mean, I'll give you 20 quid. How, how much are the Soyuz these days? They're quite cheap, aren't they? We don't, we don't want to be using those. <laughs> <laughs> it's powered by diesel. <laughs> no, we don't want to use those. Well, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe Mr. Musk can uh, flog us one for, you know. I'll have a word, I'll have uh, a word. I, I know he watches the show, so, I'll, you know, I'll reach out to him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Give us, a, give us a discount. You know, Britain's trying, yeah. Um, the, the other part we're also trying to get some money on is the ask, nuclear fusion technology. Discount. Don't ask for a discount. He hates that. He does. He hates it. Does he? No. He, yeah. No. He doesn't. He doesn't like it when you ask for a discount. Doesn't like for mate. Doesn't like doing mates rates. No discounts. Fair you just pay. You just we have to pay. You, you, no. You'll say oh, full price, please. Does he, does he like challenges though? Does he like the challenge of saying, could you speed up reducing your costs so it's sell us cheaper? Uh, I, I think he does like challenges, but generally only when he gets like a few thousand or a few million stocks because of it. <laughs> Not because I've set a challenge and he thought it'd be fun. Although, if it's something like, can you make a submarine car? Then yes. He loves those kind of challenges. I mean, he also likes, you know, introducing a tequila market brand, you know, just to rival George Clooney. But... Yeah, I mean, he's also doing that because he's something that he can do at the end of the quarter to try and make some more money. I mean, he think he made like something like 400 million or something ridiculous from the shorts he sold. Yeah. Well, he's just an eccentric billionaire, isn't he? He's basically Bruce Wayne. But um, yeah, I mean, the whole space industry thing in the UK is quite interesting. Uh, 900 million doesn't sound like a lot of money, but, you know, we are small. So I imagine it's quite a hefty investment. Uh, we're also investing in nuclear fusion technology. Um, and the idea there is to start selling that or commercialize it in some way through the UK Atomic Energy Authority. I'm not sure how we do that, but well, there's a there's been a lot of things with like there's um salt reactors and the thorium reactors or something that people have talked about for years and years and years and years and years and years, um, and that like your um. Thing you just mentioned it, it's, it's technology it's been it's like your fuel, cell, your fuel cell it's technology it's been around potentially over 100 years and we just we just haven't got around to it yet i mean it seemed like a nice idea but nah we weren't sure about spending any money but now now that it's been around the patents probably expired um yeah it might get <laughs> yeah why it takes us so long i do not know someone comes up with something decent and then someone that goes mm, not sure we're going to make enough money out of that one we'll put that on the back burner Ah, uh, this has been the oil barons. Oil. Let's do it's that. too cheap. It's too cheap. Yeah. Like, how much does thorium cost? I bet a, bo- a barrel of oil is cheaper. That's kind of, that's just where it comes down to. Um, well, isn't, isn't thorium supposed to be like in every, in every uh, square foot of soil or something across <laughs> the entire planet? Isn't it supposed to be like one of the most abundant materials there are or something? And it's like, they've gone, hmm, that sounds like something that could mess us up. Nah, it's not, it's not a dinosaur though, is it? No. That's, that's the best missing out there. They um, are. Why don't burn dirt when you can burn dinosaur? Even though technically the oil is not dinosaurs, but whatever. Um, Moving on. The other thing that was announced, which you will like, is the UK is investing in the supply chain infrastructure to large scale production. He's not sending it yet. vehicles. Hey! <laughs> right, I'm taking There were so many words in there, I forgot what the original point was. Um, basically, the UK is building the supply infrastructure to start producing large scale. Uh, Production of electric vehicles. For who? For what car? Whoever, basically. I don't know. Uh, I'm especially trying to attract, you know, like like you said, Volkswagen's got a new electric van. Can't build them in the UK. That type of thing. 
Yeah, I'm just not sure how they. I would, I would, I'm maybe I'm wrong, but I, I assume that the, the business themselves would be the one that does that, not the government going, yeah, we'll build electric vehicles. Who wants one? Well, they're not building electric vehicles, they're building the building supply chains, the infrastructure. So I would assume that would be investing in um, electric chargers or, you know, that type of stuff on motorways. Get, get the infrastructure right. ready for this. See, I'm, I'm obviously too used to a Tesla world where they do everything. <laughs> they have their own, they make their own charters, they install their own charters, they make their own batteries. They, they, they do everything. And then they invent yeah. a new heat pump just for fun. Which <laughs> they turn into a ventilator because they can. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. But yes. um, that's, that's a good thing, basically. And yeah, ultimately what the UK is trying to do, and it's my final point on this, is they're trying to increase investment in research and development from today's 14.4 billion and ideally push it to a point where we spend 22 billion a year by 2024. So it's quite optimistic targets. Yep. And yeah, we're basically doubling our spend on um, innovation, which well, the way, the way it's been pronounced is we should be one of the, the scientific and research centers of the world after that. So we're number six now on the attractiveness of renewables. I don't know what we are on a scale of innovation. Is there a scale? I have no idea. I'm sure there is one. But, you know, I assume we're up there too. And stuff like this, we should get up there more. So ultimately, I'm, I'm looking forward to all this future that we could have. This sounds like positive investments. Oh, I hope so. I hope so. Um, I mean, as I I started this with a proof. They call me old age, but I, you know, I, I there's people going, okay, that this sounds great. This sounds great. But what are you actually spending the money on? Because you're spending it. Yeah, I got four billion for this, two billion for that. All right, but what are you actually going to spend the money on? Yeah, I suppose that's that's kind of where we need more announcements. Because all of this is still pretty much brand new. This has all been announced within the last six months. Yeah. Um, like a, lot, a lot of this stuff was announced before the pandemic too. So hopefully that doesn't jeopardize any of these. I would assume not, considering we are not going to austerity. We are not ramping down any spending. And if anything, we're just chucking money out there like it's free. So, yeah. Yeah. So our kids may end up paying for this generation blunders, but they may also get to the moon and they may also get to Mars. Um, and that they sounds exciting. in a greener, cleaner world too, where they can actually, yeah. you know, walk down the street without going, well, not, not you know, unfortunately you didn't get to cough. Petrol's a <laughs> Petrol yeah. these will kill you without even realizing it. Beautiful thing. Yeah. In 50 years time, our kids may have, you know, paying 50% taxes, the normal base rate, but at least the world will end in 100 years and they can go to Mars on holiday. Hey. I think that's, that's a nice positive spin on things. Right, well, good. Well, maybe we should leave it there. It's not going to get any more positive than that, is it? No, that sounds, that sounds like a good point to end. All okay. Right. Okay, that's the end of the show. Thank you very much for watching. Think, educate, act. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.